Hello, welcome to the All or One channel. I'm astrologer and coach Kelly Rosano, and this is Aries 2012 Year Ahead Astrology Forecast. Aries, Jupiter is in your second house until June 12. The second house is the area of your life that has to do with your money, your earning ability, your personal resources, your talent, your sense of self-worth, self-respect, appreciation. You really want to be going for it now in this area for the first half of 2012, having Jupiter, which is the fairy godmother. When Jupiter is in the second house in this part of our life, we have a fairy godmother. And that fairy godmother you know, says, what do you wish for? What are you wishing for? And having Jupiter in the second house increases income because Jupiter rules expansion. Wherever Jupiter is, is where we're expanding. So Jupiter in your second house is expanding your earning ability, expanding your sense of self-worth, your sense of self-respect, your appreciation. Jupiter is expanding your ability to invest well, earn more money, and so you really want to take advantage of the first six months of 2012 with Jupiter in this part of your chart. Now Mars, which rules our drive in life, Mars is the action planet. Mars gives us oomph. Without Mars, we can't get out of bed in the morning. So wherever Mars is, is where we are being directed to focus a lot of energy. And for you, it's in the area of your chart that has to do with work and service, health habits, diet habits, psychological diet, how you feed yourself emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and physically. Our wealth is in our health. Without our health, all the money in the world can't fix us. So it's also the house of lifestyle. Now Mars is going to be in the sixth house, this area of your life, for nine months. That's because Mars goes retrograde January 23rd through April 13th. Having Mars in this part of your chart is really going to drive you to take off weight if you need to take off weight, get in better condition, get in better health, work hard at the job. When we work hard at the job, we earn more money. See, there goes, we're back at that second house area. So, so the sixth house is empowering you to increase your income through increasing your health, uh, increasing your well-being, and looking at your lifestyle. What can you cut out you know, as far as habits that are no longer serving you. You know, it, maybe you need to cut back on things and eat more vegetables, drink more water. Water is so important because it flushes out the toxins and it um, makes us feel better. It's, it's so healthy to drink clean water. It's so empowering to do that for our health. It's really important. Now, I'm going to talk about Pluto and Uranus first with you because Pluto, <laughs> the planet of power and transformation, is in your 10th house. And Uranus, the planet of unexpected, unpredictability, is in your sign, which makes it in your first house. Well, Pluto in the 10th has to do with success and destiny, what you do in the world, your reputation, your profession your status in the world, your achievement in the world. And Aries, you are such a fiery go-getter sign. You're the action sign. I love Aries. When we have Aries in this part of the world, spring begins and new growth begins. And Aries represents new beginnings, the go-for-it spirit. Aries is brave and courageous and fiery. And having Uranus in your sign on the one hand, it really empowers you to speak your truth. You know, it really says, I'm not putting up with anything. This is what I want. This is my truth. Deal with it. I love that with people. I love people that are the same on the outside as they are on the inside. The challenge is having Uranus in your sign can make you impatient. It can make you really impatient with the rest of us because we can't keep up with you. 
<laughs> you know, you, you hit the ball and you're, you're already on third base and we're still trying to get to first base. See, we got to go to first and second and you're already there. So, you know, patience, Aries, I'm sure you've been told this your whole life, <laughs> starting by, with your mother telling you, be patient. Um, and the reason I'm saying this is because Pluto and Uranus are going to be in a fistfight this year. They're squaring off and they're going to be squaring off for the next three years. They're going to make seven exact squares, 2012, 2013, 2014, into 2015. And the first one is, if I can find it, June 24th. And the second one is September 19th. So those are two periods where you really want to watch your temper because it's it's in the for you it's happened at the top of the chart in the first house so if you explode we're all going to see it you know what i mean like you might just have it at work or you might just have it with the people you're working with that you've had it with them you've had it with their lies you've had it with their baloney you've had it with the, all the the crap they've been sending at you and <laughs> you are taking no prisoners on june 24th and september 19th so you don't want to do anything that would undermine your success in the world because others aren't walking their talk and they're out of their integrity. Pluto and Uranus are, are affecting all of us somewhere in our chart. For you, it's in the world, how you show up in the world, your reputation in the world, the house of destiny, your profession in the world. So it's going to be very public what the Aries are doing in 2012. It's going to be very public what you guys do in 2012 we're all going to be watching and we're going to see it and we'll probably see it on the headlines june 24th and september 19th you know where people just have had it and they're not taking any prisoners and so if you decide to you may even decide to quit your job at that time or just leave a situation because these energies are explosive and final so anything that ends at that time know that it's time for it to go and it is for your highest good. Anything that you may even intuitively know now, because Uranus is a very psychic planet too, like Neptune, in a different way. Um, Uranus is, is the coffee, Neptune is the wine. And so, you know, we can have a Neptune transit where we're just, hey, everything's great, and then Uranus comes in with the coffee, and it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> what's going on here? So, Uranus and uh, Pluto are going at it, they're going to duke it out because everything's out of balance, it's out of balance in the world, the economy's out of balance, the banking system's out of balance, and we need to bring things back to balance. We need to bring things back to balance for ourselves and with others. And all of our systems need to be changed. And so these two are the truth tellers, and they're coming in to tell the truth in every direction. and. So, you know, it, so you have to work it the way that, that you know, empowers you and, and you want to look at your career in the, in the bigger picture of where you want your career to go. So, you know, is, is forewarned, is forearmed, and in this way you know there's some volatil volatility coming up here in June for you and then in September. And then this way you don't have to you know, let it build, build, build until it explodes, you can be taking it to the gym with Mars in the sixth house. Work it out. That's a wonderful way to work this energy is to take it into physical activity and direct it through physical activity rather than telling your boss off or telling those you work with off and then walking out the door, you know, come what may. So uh, just want you to be aware that this is a powerful time for all of us, but especially for you because Uranus is in your first house in your sign. Okay, now Jupiter is going to move into your third house and Venus will be in your third house and Venus and Jupiter will be in your third house. Venus will be in there from April 4th through August 7th and then Jupiter joins the third house on June 12th and then you have the first eclipse in there on May 20th which has to do with new beginnings and so it has to do with new beginnings with writing, speaking, teaching, 
short distance travel, opportunities for communicating your ideas, opportunities for writing, opportunities for speaking and teaching and traveling in a, in a short distance area within a 100 mile radius. And so having the goddess of love and beauty in your third house of communication and then Jupiter, the god of abundance and expansion coming there and then the first eclipse on May 20th, this is going to change how you think. This is going to change how you communicate. You're going to be communicating really well, and this will help you in June when Pluto and Uranus dance. <laughs> and then there's a Sagittarius eclipse on June 4th, the Sagittarius lunar eclipse at 14 degrees Sagittarius in your ninth house of long distance travel, of connecting with people all over the planet connecting to your higher mind, expansion of consciousness, connecting to your spiritual soul, your spiritual self, connecting with source. So you're going to be very busy. You may be traveling around the planet at this time. Then Saturn, who is in your seventh house until October 5th, Saturn in the seventh house. Now, the seventh house is the Libra house. Aries, you are the first house. You are the self. Libra is relationships, partnerships, marriage. Libra is the we. Libra is the us. You're the self. Libra is the us. Saturn's been going through that seventh house of we and us. And so you've really been looking at relationships and, and Saturn doesn't let us step over anything. So anything we've been tolerating will you know, be shown to us with Saturn in the seventh. He's still in there. She's still in there until the 5th of October. So you're still looking at your relationships and your partnerships and working out, you know, because that's what it's about, right? It's about compromise when we're in a relationship. You bring something to the table. They bring something to the table. He, she brings something to the table. With Saturn in there, it is, you know, an opportunity to look at where you can be perhaps more giving in the relationship, where you can compromise more in the relationship, where you can be more aware of what your partner needs from you, be more aware of what other people need from you. You know, Aries, you're the first sign, and I love Aries. It's a fiery energy. It's, it's a dynamic energy but it's a very independent energy. And Aries isn't always aware of other people's feelings or other people's needs of them. And so with Saturn in there, Saturn's been, you know, Saturn is the cosmic mother. I think of Saturn as the cosmic mother who goes through each area of our life and saying, are you, what are you doing? Did you brush your teeth? Oh, okay. Did you floss? <laughs> That's Saturn. So Saturn in the seventh house is going, how's this relationship going? Is it meeting your needs? Are you fulfilling the agreement? Saturn doesn't care what the agreement is as long as we fulfill the agreement because Saturn rules integrity and honor. And so Saturn's been in the relationship sector for quite a while now. Then Saturn will go into your eighth house, which is the Scorpio house. And that means time to take the relationship even deeper time to go deeper now into the relationship, time to go deeper into the commitment, time to look at what the partner's bringing to the relationship, what the partner's resources are bringing to the relationship. Then there's also an eclipse that follows Saturn into that eighth house. And that is on November 13th, a Scorpio solar eclipse in your eighth house. So you're really gonna be looking at your finances uh, at the end of the year of, of uh, any debt that you have, any loans that you have, um, you're wanting to, you know, perhaps restructure things so that uh, your income is really working for you, because the eclipses are going to be going back and forth from that point on in the second and the eighth, at, at the end of 2012 and then 2013, 2014, they'll be in the second and the eighth, the Scorpio and the Taurus. So then you're going to really be looking at your personal resources, your partner's resources. And your debt structure and so this is a time for you to 
really strengthen your relationships, strengthen your partnership. Then Neptune is in the 12th house. Neptune is in the 12th house. Now, Neptune represents our highest ideals and spirituality. So you may not even really notice that Neptune's in the 12th house because the 12th house is that which is hidden. The, the 12th house is the subconscious mind. You may be having more dreams, more vivid dreams, more dreams that are uh, more revealing. So if you're, the source works through our dreams, our higher self works through our dreams. So if you're having vivid dreams, you may want to be writing them down so that you can work with your dreams to manifest, to manifest your dreams. <laughs> I like that. Work with your dreams to manifest your dreams. Well, Aries, that's it for this time. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in getting a detailed look at your astrology in 2012, email me at kelly at kellyrosano.com. Until next time, keep looking up.